Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with yet another OpenAI update, but one that is sort of expected, but still really cool. Basically, for a little while now, it's been clear that part of the battle when it comes to the state of the art in AI is not just about models themselves, or even this new sort of agentic break that we're seeing with O1, but also just about simple user interface and user experience. Anthropic really jumped out ahead of OpenAI on this front when they announced their Artifacts feature. Basically, Artifacts was a second window that came up alongside the prompt window that allowed you to better see the document that was being built by Claude as it was happening. And while it seems like a small UI upgrade, it was a significant one, one that was meaningful enough that many people, myself included, were often finding themselves going to Claude even more often just to get access to that interface. Well, now OpenAI has announced their own version, and they're calling it Canvas. It does something very similar to Claude's Artifacts, where it opens a second window to view and edit AI projects. Daniel Levine, a product lead at OpenAI, said, the core thing we're trying to solve is a better way to collaborate with ChatGPT on writing and coding. Still, there's some things that are a little bit different about Canvas that are really cool as well. In an announcement post, they write, with Canvas, ChatGPT can better understand the context of what you're trying to accomplish. You can highlight specific sections to indicate exactly what you want ChatGPT to focus on. Like a copy editor or a code reviewer, it can give inline feedback and suggestions with the entire project in mind. So this feature then allows ChatGPT to suggest inline edits, automatically adjust the document length to be shorter or longer, adjust the reading level anywhere from kindergarten to grad school, check for grammar, clarity, and consistency, or even add emojis, which Sam Altman would go on to suggest is the best feature that they've ever pushed. One of the big game changers in image generation AI was when tools like Midjourney allowed you to start modifying very specific sections of the image rather than just having to reprompt the whole thing. And this is sort of the equivalent for writing both words and for code. This is one of those things that now that it exists, it's basically impossible to believe that it didn't exist up till now. It's just such a much more intuitive way to interact. But it is such a huge improvement, and one that I think really will benefit basically every ChatGPT user. Now, while that was the main focus with OpenAI yesterday, there was yet another notable departure from the company as well. One of the leads on Sora, OpenAI's video generator, left to join Google. Tim Brooks announced on Twitter slash X, I will be joining Google DeepMind to work on video generation and world simulators. Can't wait to collaborate with such a talented team. I had an amazing two years at OpenAI making Sora. Thank you to all the passionate and kind people I worked with. Excited for the next chapter. Now, this whole idea of a world simulator seems to be really the focus. DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis said, so excited to be working together to make the longstanding dream of a world simulator a reality. In terms of what a world simulator is, DeepMind researchers explained it in a 2023 paper by saying, applications of a real-world simulator range from controllable content generation in games to movies to training embodied agents purely in simulation that can be directly deployed in the real world. As always, there could be some very simple personal reason for Tim Brooks leaving, but it does bring up further questions around Sora, which while blowing people's socks off with its previews back in February when it was announced, seems to have lost a lot of ground from rivals like Luma Runway and others. Just as I began to record this, I also saw that Meta had released some new video generation models, which I'm sure we'll be talking about next week. There's also the competitive dimension, where as TechCrunch puts it, OpenAI has appeared to cede valuable partnership ground to video generation challengers in recent months. They point to stability, recruiting James Cameron to be on its board, and a deal between Runway and Lionsgate to train a custom video model on Lionsgate's movie catalog. Now again, this doesn't mean that we're not going to see something amazing from Sora that redefines our expectations of what can be. And it also doesn't mean that we're not about to see it announce some big partnership with a studio that's just happening behind the scenes. Still, any sort of departure like this is going to bring up questions, for which, of course, right now we don't have answers. One thing we do have answers for is what the demand looks like for NVIDIA's newest Blackwell AI chips. According to CEO Jensen Huang, the demand is, quote, insane. During an interview on CNBC, Jensen said, Blackwell is in full production, Blackwell is as planned, and the demand for Blackwell is insane. Everybody wants to have the most and everybody wants to be first. He continued, When you look at the performance boost that you're going to get on Blackwell versus Hopper, every hyperscaler is going to aggressively buy this stuff up, not to mention enterprise customers and tier 2 cloud players. NVIDIA's stock loved the news, gaining 4% in an otherwise flat market. Basically, every time you want to think that we're past any sort of hype cycle, the NVIDIA train just keeps on rolling. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.